Hello, I'm Mary Hornbuckle, and with me today is Gladys Rafakis. I will be interviewing her here at the Costa Mesa Historical Society. Uh, we're inter doing these interviews for the 50th anniversary celebration of the city of Costa Mesa. Gladys, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed, and I'm anxious to hear about your history in this area. When did you first come to the area? I came to this area uh, about 52 years ago and uh, uh, first uh, uh, passed through Costa Mesa on my way to visit a, an old Chicago friend who was living and working in uh, Newport Beach. And uh, we went down through Costa Mesa and it just reminded me of thousands of little Midwest towns that I had been through, lived some I had lived in, and so on like that. It was a real little agrarian country, country town type uh, town, and uh, we had uh, laughed about it in in, pa in uh, after years about uh, coming to a one horse town that <laughs> turned out to be more than what we had bargained for. <laughs> well, when you came to town, um, you didn't come down the freeway, I guess. What was the road that well, you took? Well, it was a three-lane road. They had one lane going into town, one lane going out of town, and there was one lane that was in between, and we kind of wondered about that. And we wondered why, in later years, they called it the suicide lane. Oh. It was the passing lane, and there were frequently a lot of accidents oh, because of that passing lane. But it's Shortly afterwards, it uh, improved and became a four-lane with two lanes going each way, which we were very thankful for. And, of course, nowadays we have the 55 freeway, which is a multi-lane, multi-traveled uh, thoroughfare. And did you travel on the Pacific Coast Highway? Was it here at that time? Yes, it was, and uh, that was not Pacific Coast Highway necessarily. Uh, that was called Highway 101. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice scenic way to travel. If you wanted to see the scenery of the ocean as well as inland, you traveled on 101. And when you settled in Costa Mesa, where did you live? Well, the first place that we moved to, we had lived in. I have to back up and say we lived in Newport for a couple of years and uh, our lease had run out but the landlord had said well just continue the way you are and we'll handle it month by month. And in the meantime the landlord's daughter became married and became a resident of, of uh, Newport and we were asked to move. So we had to scramble because it was coming into the summer season and and uh, a lot of people were moving down towards the beach area if they didn't move into the beach itself for the summer months. And uh, it was sort of hard to find a place to, uh, that was suitable. So we did wind up finding a little house that was on 17th Street, which nowadays would be in what would be called, tier, was called Teardrop Park right in the middle of the intersection of 17th Street and Newport. Uh, that little green grassy area a, there. We had mm -hmm. a little green grass, a little green grass area. There wasn't much in front, but we had a nice little house there, which the uh, landlady lived like next door to us, and on the corner was a great big standard oil, oil station. Across the street, where there were a few uh, shops, like this Safeway and uh, a dime store, and a couple of other uh, stores, and the one right on the corner was a Vandy Camp's Bakery. Oh, good. And Vandy Camp's, I think they did it on purpose. They would bring their gr bakery goods in, and they turned on the fans so everybody in the neighborhood <laughs> could smell all those good bakery goods. And my daughter ha had a yen for uh, chocolate donuts, and we used to have to go to every couple of days we'd have to go over to Vandy Camps and get a chocolate donut for her. <laughs> Those are fun times to remember. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly were. There wasn't much on 17th Street. There was uh, 
uh, Mr. Marine had built a small, what would be called a mini mall. It had three or four uh, little shops. One was uh, a dress shop that was operated by a Mrs. Church, who family still lives here in town. And there was a Mr. Chastain who had a shoe, uh, shoe repair shop. And he became my, daughter, my daughter's very good friend. He would give her little pieces of leather and show her how, how he mended shoes, and she really enjoyed that. And then there was another little shop uh, down at the end that was uh, a yardage goods shop, and it was run by a little Japanese lady who was very industrious. I never saw her when she wasn't working at her sewing machine making uh, uh, making things to sell or selling yardage goods. Uh, further on down the street, there was a uh, big vacant lot, which is now Long's Drug Store and the uh, uh, the Vons Market area, and just about where they have the the uh, recycle center now. There was a, an old garage that was painted dark green, and this man did small automa automotive uh, repair and uh, also uh, uh, sharpened lawnmowers. And later on, after I moved to the home that I live in now, I used to push my lawnmower over there and have him <laughs> sharpen it from time to time. So just like today, you could get just about anything on 17th Street? Well, no, not really, because they hadn't, at that time, they hadn't put up the the shopping area that w areas that we have on 17th Street. Most of that was open fields, and some of it was in uh, in gardens and planted, and a, f a few a few small buildings. But uh, it was pretty uh, pretty open down there at that time. Uh, we had uh, on the corner of 17th and Santa Ana, where they have the big promenade uh, shopping center. They have. Um, uh, had a big field, and an elderly gentleman there had a nice crop of, of uh, sweet corn. You know, we used to buy sweet corn and, and uh, carrots, tomatoes from him, and uh, we always liked to stop there because he had some roses that were growing on the fence, and we always stopped to smell the roses oh. and, and count the blossoms. <laughs> Did 17th Street go all the way through to Newport Beach? The way it does now with connecting uh, to West No, Coast. it was a, it was pretty much a straight street. There were no no turns like there are from uh, the 17th, where the uh, Superior uh, Superior and West 17th mm -hmm. Street like there was uh, uh, it wasn't any anything there. There was a dry cleaners that uh, was established on the corner. And it was kind of difficult to get to that. But that street has been widened considerably in uh, recent years and uh, been improved upon quite a bit. What would you say the population of Costa Mesa was about that time? Oh, I would say around, it was probably coming up to about 10,000, uh, maybe a little less. I believe there was a sign signed down on, on the street that we passed between Newport and, and Costa Mesa that said 7,900 and some. But uh, of course, I didn't know how long that sign had been there. <laughs> but I would estimate with the new people moving in after the war the, and the new housing going in that uh, uh, it was probably around 10,000. So they'd built the subdivision over in West Costa Mesa that was called Freedom Homes by then. Well, that that came uh, yes in the uh, late fifties, early sixties, mm -hmm. in which they mm -hmm. in which they did did that. That was uh, uh, a huge uh, uh, subdivision, and uh, it really uh, brought a lot of people in. The area where I lived on the east side was was built, most of it was built in uh, 48, 49, and 50. And uh, my house was built in 1949. Uh, but I didn't move in that until uh, 1953 when I moved in there. Mm -hmm. And what did your husband do? My husband was in the restaurant business uh, when we had first come to uh, 
uh, to Newport to, to visit this Chicago friend of his. <laughs> we, uh, he was in the manager of a, of a restaurant and uh, he talked my husband into uh, coming to work for him. And uh, so he, he, he did and uh, then uh, this gentleman uh, had a heart attack and passed away in uh, about a year afterwards. And uh, uh, then my husband and the other fellow that was working as, as a cook uh, took over the, the management of the restaurant and managed that for a number of years until the uh, property was sold so that they could put up a big condominium on the location. So uh, then we went to another uh, small small place, and uh, he managed the uh, the restaurant there for a while. And uh, after about a year or so, we bought our own restaurant out on Pacific Coast Highway, and had that for a total of about five years. And uh, that what was, was the just name? What was the name of it? Uh, it was called Pete's Cafe after my husband, oh, whose name was great. Peter. Great. And of course, uh, once you own your own place, you were probably involved there. Well, I was involved even before uh, when they were at the Norm's Landing Cafe. Uh, I never thought about becoming a waitress. In fact, the last thing I wanted to do was to be a waitress or a nurse. I felt <laughs> that those were two service areas that I just wasn't interested in at all. and. Uh, one of the waitresses uh, had to have an emergency operation and, and uh, was going to be hospitalized or convalescing for about three or four weeks. And so it was in the coming into the summer season in which uh, all the waitresses of any note were already employed for the season. And so my husband said, well, I guess well, you better come down and give us a hand. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> got me started. <laughs> and so at the end of, uh, the, end of the time when uh, this young lady was able to come back to work, in the meantime, someone, one of the girls had quit to get married and so, and the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> so, so that was your moved. career. <laughs> I just I just sort of moved from, just sort of moved into that job, and then uh, when uh, my husband, when we left there, we took over the uh, the management of the the restaurant at at a little place called Snug Harbor, which is, I think, it's still in existence. I was going to say uh, the one that exists today. And. Uh, uh, we were there for about a year and a half, two years, something like that, and and my husband kept thinking, oh, I've got to get out of this place and get get some into a better better location, into a good location, and get a place. So we moved out onto uh, had an opportunity to purchase this restaurant on Pacific Coast Highway. And uh, it was in West Newport, and at that time, West Newport was just uh, beginning to come into its own. They were uh, building Newport Shores was being uh, <coughs> built, and uh, a number of new businesses had gone in out there, and life was the area was kind of coming back to life again. And so we were out there then for. <coughs> several years until 1965 when my husband passed away and <clears throat> just prior to that. So it turned out to be a little more than I wanted to handle and more than I could handle. So uh, I was able to sell to a young man who was interested in a different type of food service. <clears throat> from, uh, from there I played around for a couple of months uh, trying to find, decide what I wanted to do. And, uh, and I worked at a couple of places uh, temporarily as cashier, or hostess or something like that. And then the, uh, 
1965, I think it was, the, there were a lot of changes up in the north end of town, and they began building. Kona Lanes had been there for several years, and then they had a, a, um, a shopping area uh, across the street from Kona Lanes, and the Mesa Verde uh, tract was uh, going to be started soon. They'd put up apartments uh, on Peterson near the college. The college had <coughs> had increased in uh, uh, attendance, and uh, so the uh, uh, a number of companies came in. There was a savings and loan, and that came in, and <coughs> a couple of other buildings. And Howard Johnson's came into town. Uh, one of the girls who was uh, working at the uh, as a waitress at the place where I was cashiering, said, you know, I, when I live back east, I work for Howard Johnson's restaurants. And she said, uh, it was a good place to work, and I made good tips, and so I like that. She said, uh, I think I'm going to go up and put in my application. And I said, well, why don't I tag along with you? <laughs> so I went up there, and I put in my application, and I hardly got home, and the phone rang. They asked me to come to work if I come to work the next day, and I said oh. no, no, I'm sorry, I cannot come to work the next day. I said I would not leave where I'm working without giving uh, the boss a week's notice, and I said um, I could come in next next week. Well, we're starting our training program to day after tomorrow, and I said, how about next week? <laughs> and so the lady said, yes, why don't you come in next next Monday? So I went in on that following Monday, and they had finished up their training program. She handed me a tray, and she says, um, we're open, so you might as well go to work. Oh, my goodness. So I picked up a tray and my book and went to work. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of confusing. <laughs> I had to write things down because when... When my husband and I worked, worked at our restaurant, I would take the order and I'd go call it into the kitchen and when it was ready, he'd say, order up, and I'd go pick it up and serve it. Well, I'd go stand there and I'd take the order for these people and I'd stand there with a book in my pocket and my pencil in my pocket and not take the order. And I'd get over to the restaurant. Oh gosh, I got to write this thing down. <laughs> it took me about a week to get used to get used to the idea of writing up an order and and uh, putting it on paper to so and then I'm a terrible writer and of course they'd always call me and say, "What is this for heaven's <laughs> sake?" <laughs> but anyway, I I worked there until uh they were ready to they closed it up in Costa Mesa. It, the gentleman that owned the franchise decided it wasn't making enough money for him, and mm. and he had not been successful in getting a a permit to build a hotel mm. uh, on the premises for some reason or other. I don't know what the what the reason was, but he just wasn't able to get a, get a permit or get things done the way he wanted them. So he decided he would give it up, and the uh, company decided that it was not, without a hotel, it was not going to pay as well as, as it hmm. should for the amount of money that was would be put in for the investment. So they closed that up and they had a number of transfer places for people to go. They had a huge facility at, up near Disneyland on, on uh, Manchester and uh, Harbor. And uh, I had worked there a few times as a as a fill-in when they needed help badly. So they said, well, we'd like to have you come to work for us at our store. So I went there, and I was there then for 13 and a half years. So I mm. retired out of there after serving 21 and a half, 20 and a half years at uh, there. Now, where was the Howard Johnson's in Costa Mesa? Can you locate it, that for me? Yes. 
if you know where the Coco's restaurant is, then you know where Howard Johnson's is. I wondered if that uh -huh. was the same location. It was the same, same location. It had briefly, after, it was sold briefly and was named something similar to like, like JoJo's or something like oh. that. And then the uh, uh, gentleman who owned the uh, uh, Coco's chain purchased it. And it's been remodeled a number of times since and so on. And I still go up there once in a while to kind of go in and sit down and think how different it is and, <laughs> and yet how, how similar it is. Mm. And, and you let uh, someone else serve you now. Yes. <laughs> And it's always, it's always refreshing. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit, Gladys, to when you um, l were a housewife here in Costa Mesa living on 17th Street. You indicated that your daughter would go to this store, to that store. Were children pretty free to wander where they wanted to? Well, if they, uh, aside from uh, crossing Newport Boulevard, which was always a busy, a busy intersection, uh, Children went just about any place they wanted to go. Uh, sometimes they didn't want to go to school, but then <laughs> that's uh, unusual, the usual thing. There was there were uh, there was a nice park that was uh, uh, available, uh, Lions Park. It wasn't uh, as developed as it is now. In fact, it was just one large lot and had a sand lot at one end, and uh, and the whole area was. Uh, uh, available for kids to play and that was always a nice spot and th then down the street uh, I think I indicated that uh, were Long's Drug Store and uh, and uh, uh, Vons uh, are located uh, today uh, there was a large area and some of the children who lived on on Orange Avenue uh, in that uh, uh, block uh, played in in that lot, lot area, and uh, uh, they were just a, a. It was just sort of a free area, and you thought nothing of letting your child run down to, going down to the store to get an ice cream cone, or, or to, going out by themselves. Even even young children, you always were ca uh, caution them, of course, but. Uh, uh, they were uh, able to uh, get a, get around freely, and and you didn't have any fear of their being kidnapped or accosted mm. or anything like that. And you didn't have to go with them and keep an eye on them all the well, time. Well, no, not really. I mean, you could feel free to walk down the street. You go into a store, and you could turn them loose, and you say, "Well, I'm going to do my shopping now. Keep an eye out and look for me." You know, and they'd run down and look at some, maybe some toys or, or a magazine or, uh, depending upon their age, or look at uh, different things to uh, see whether they were, you, you just, just knew that they were around mm -hmm. and you didn't have to worry about them that much. Now, what were some of your daughter's favorite things to do in Costa Mesa? My daughter was quite a tomboy. She uh, she always had a swing when she was young, and uh, she'd swing for hours. Then she became interested in tetherball, and she we had a tetherball in our backyard, and um, she played played with all the kids in the block, and. We used to kid her and say, how many boys did you beat up on today? <laughs> <laughs> but she wasn't an aggressive thing, but she was definitely the leader of the pack. She was in there with them. She, yeah. was, she was right there and assertive at times. And uh, she always had, a, always had a lot of fun and good rapport with, with all the children. And we had, uh, when we lived, lived lived on Magnolia Street where I live now. We had, uh, there were a lot of, lot of young families there and they all had uh, children. She was the, only, the, the, lone, the lone one in our family and uh, there were three on one side and five on, five on the, 
kids on the other side and the next house down I think had five and on down the line every, everybody had a couple of children and uh, they all got together played in the yard yards ran up and down the street and ran their bicycles rode their bicycles and their scooters and things on the uh, right out on the street and we only had a half street for a long time and there was an open field across the street uh, a couple of doors down and that was a, a half half block and it ran between Magnolia and 18th Street and it was a, a wonderful place for kids to go and play and when the grass and the weeds got real high they play hide and seek and they had all kinds of paths across across the lots and uh, they just had a wonderful time and it was a a good time for kids to grow up. Good place to grow up. Yeah, yeah. and across the street from us we had, when we first moved there, we had uh, a lady, a Mrs. Dinger, who lived there, and she had, um, she had kept a cow there at one time, but when they built the church on the corner, they asked her if she would mind to get rid of her cow. <laughs> <laughs> at least I, that was the story I heard. <laughs> and directly across the street from us, uh, 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 an elderly gentleman, I believe he was Italian, because I had trouble understanding his English, <laughs> and he raised all sorts of um, uh, garden vegetables and and he had um, uh, raspberries and, um, strawberries and um, boysenberries and we always go go there to get some and she would he'd always call to my call them the kids and say come here come here and he'd give them give them a handful of strawberries oh, or a handful of of berries oh, and, and come home with their mouths all colored up. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned a church being built. Do you mm -hmm. recall uh, what the churches were in Costa Mesa then? Well, let's see. That was that was a newly built one, and that was the uh, at that time it was called the First Baptist Church, and it was that way for many years until the uh, name was changed. Uh, there were quite a few churches in town. The uh, uh, there was a four square church on Orange Avenue, Orange and Cabrillo, that had evidently had been there for a long time. Uh, there was a uh, Seventh Day Adventist church on um, just around the corner here on Anaheim, and there was a Methodist uh, First Methodist church. I believe it was called Union uh, Union Methodist Church on uh, 19th Street, which is still in existence. It's mm -hmm. a, one of our points of interest in town. I like the big church there. And uh, uh, there were a couple of other little churches, but I'm not familiar, wasn't familiar with at that particular time. And then we have the, uh, the there was a Catholic church, which was, uh, a barracks building from Santa Ana Army Air Base. Oh, that's right. They used some and of they buildings. used that for many, many years for their church. I went to several weddings and uh, and funerals in the in that in that building. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was working on the election board, I uh, I served over there. I think on two different times. Uh, that I worked the poles uh, in the old barracks building. Mm. And uh, then uh, later on they had their the nice church that they have mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, Some of the other churches that were built up as people moved into the area, the mm. uh, uh, Catholic Church on uh, Baker Street was built up after they, after uh, the surrounding areas. There was a couple of uh, Baptist church uh, on, I believe, Fairview and Baker that was put up around the time that they 
they worked in that particular area. And over in Mesa Verde, there were several churches that were built, built in there as people moved into the area mm -hmm. and the need arose for right. these different churches. What do you know about the schools? Where did your daughter go to school? Well, um, we uh, moved uh, to, when we first lived in, in, on 17th Street, she went to, uh, we found out that there was a new school called Harper School that was down on the corner of, of East 18th and Tustin Avenue. And it had, had just been opened. And so she went down there. I, I thought at first that she would, at first I had been told that she would have to go to the main school, which was down on the corner of 19th and Newport Boulevard. And uh, I, was, I was really kind of concerned because that would mean she would have to cross several intersections in order to get to school if she walked. So I was really very pleased when I found that, that the Harper School was open and that uh, she could walk d that far. But, uh, uh, and so she went there and went into the first grade there. And she Harper, walked to school Harper every day. School. And, she, and walked. she walked to school most every day. Uh, sometimes I would accompany her uh, for the walk. We had uh, a lot of a lot of vacant open spaces to walk across, and the kids eventually uh, that walked from that area would walk to found their own little paths that they would <laughs> could follow to uh, cross the fields and so on to get to school faster. And then when we moved to our present home on Magnolia Street, it was uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump to go to school. And she only had one street to cross, and that was Tustin Avenue, which was a very slow-moving uh, street as far as traffic was concerned. So she spent uh, six years there. And uh, when she finished there, uh, she was going into seventh grade. And they were building, in the process of building Kaiser School, but it wasn't finished. So she had to go to race school. And she went to race school for six months until the uh, Kaiser School was finished. Now, Ray and Kaiser were both junior high schools. They were both junior they? high. And they, at that time, they carried only the seventh and eighth grades. There was such a demand for uh, uh, schools. They had only had three main schools, at, and then they were in the process of building other schools around. Like Mesa Verde had a grammar school. There was a Woodland had a grammar school. Uh, they had grammar classes at uh, at the old uh, Lindbergh School on Orange Avenue, and uh, then Harper Harper was a relatively was a new school, and. There was just such a demand for uh, schooling uh, by the time these kids got up to seventh and eighth grade that there wasn't any place for them to go. So that's why they were building not only Ray School, but they had to build Kaiser for an expansion for the children who lived on the on the on the west side, uh, the east side of, of uh, town, because the. Uh, Ray School was filled with children from the west side and the north side. And uh, so she went there until the uh, school, Kaiser, was finished. And then she went to um, uh, the, uh, I went to, sc went to school in Kaiser through the eighth grade. And from there, there were a lot of decisions then on high schools, and they built, um, Costa Mesa High School, and there was a kind of a toss-up as to which neighborhood was going to be, was the dividing line. Well, one year, when she was a senior, the year that year she was she was would have been going to uh, Costa Mesa School. Well, during the summer, it said somewhere along in the in line. By the time fall started, the school started in the fall. The uh, they had changed the dividing line, so she went to Har uh, Newport Harbor High. So she went to went there and Did she go all four years her, to Newport Harbor? Uh, no, just a three just, uh, just a four years, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. finished up there and uh, 
and uh, from there she went on and eventually uh, picked up at Orange Coast College and and on then on to uh, Cal State Fullerton. Very good. Where she has a master's. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, you have been very active in the community. Um, I first met you when you were involved with the Costa Mesa Senior Club. Tell us a little bit about that involvement. When did you get uh, started working with them? Well, the Costa Mesa Senior, Senior, what they call the Costa Mesa Senior Citizens Club, uh, was started in, I believe, 19, about 1965. It was after uh, the city had incorporated and kind of got a lot of agencies going. And uh, I joined uh, approximately uh, around 1979, I believe, when I joined. joined. I was w working all the time, and I wasn't interested in joining too many things to get involved in because I, if I'm involved in something, I like to be immersed in it more or less. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had, the first meeting I went to uh, of the Costa Mesa Senior Citizens Club was in a barracks building in the back end of the uh, Orange County Fairgrounds. Oh, yes. And we went, I went to three or four um, meetings there, I uh, went as a guest of someone who was a member, and uh, uh, also the little playhouse was located in the same same area, and I attended several several playhouse uh, productions there. That was the Costa Mesa Playhouse. Costa Mesa mm -hmm. Playhouse, yes. And uh, they had had some Early beginnings, I believe, in the in a downtown area originally, uh, some building downtown, and then they moved to the to the barracks building, where they had more room, and now they're located on the uh, uh, portion of uh, what's now what's Ray School. Uh, the uh, community center on. Uh, on Park Avenue was uh, was dedicated in 1980, and the Senior Citizens Club was uh, moved over there, and they were welcomed into that building and held many of their meetings and so on there. Uh, my first introduction into really uh, becoming an integral part was a volunteer at the information desk. And that involved answering questions about various services and uh, as well as the activities of the of the club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I handled that for quite a while, and then later became involved as as secretary. And I served three terms as president. And uh, so on. It's just barely in existence now as when the uh, when the uh, senior center was it was we had talked about having a senior center for a long time and uh, the city thought that it was time for them to have a place of their own and the uh, a place that was available was uh, a building on 19th and uh, Pomona that had at one time had been the, the city hall, and uh, it was uh, later became Mardan sc School. Well, Mardan School was lo locating to another place, and this this building was available to the city, and I think they had made arrangements that they would have first first opportunity to uh, uh, take the building, uh, purchase the building. My recollection is that when uh, Dominic Rossiti was on the city council, he's the one who insisted that clause be put into the the original bill of sale oh. to Mardan School. No, I, I didn't so know, that, didn't remember yeah. who it who it was had done that, but they really really did the seniors a favor by doing that, and uh, so the city uh, put up this lovely building, and. Uh, uh, everyone was very enthusiastic about moving into this new building, so the seniors had a home of their own, 
so to speak. And it's, uh, it's been flourishing now. I think this is our, about the 12th year that it's been there. So majority of the people who belong to the Senior Citizens Club just uh, began meeting over there. And uh, a lot of people have come and gone through those years. And some of them are able to enjoy it, and some were uh, not so fortunate to live mm -hmm. to see it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. The Costa Mesa Women's Club is another interest of yours. Um, tell us a little bit about your involvement there. And by the way, do you know when the Women's Club was started? Well, the Women's Club itself uh, evolved out of uh, an organization called the Friday Afternoon Club, which was a group of group of women about, uh, around town that uh, had a sewing circle. And they met every Friday, or Friday once a month, I believe it was. And uh, I think it was for coffee and gossip and a little, <laughs> maybe a little sewing. A little reinforcement. <laughs> yes, yes. Support. And they did support a number of, uh, a number of worthy organizations. And in 1922, they became affiliated with the uh, uh, Women's Club uh, Federation. And uh, uh, their first president, was a, uh, a a young young woman uh, by the name of Alice Plummer. Mm -hmm. Now Alice Plummer was a, I believe, a school teacher, and uh, she probably did a very good job of organizing everything. And because we have survived over all these years, was her family the family for whom Plummer Street was named? Yes, yes. And not only that, but she was also the person who gave us our name, Costa Mesa. Oh, that's right. In 1922, they had a, a contest to rename this town of Harper because there was another little town by the name of Harperville up around uh, Huntington Beach, and the post office kept getting the mail confused. <laughs> now then, that's nothing new in getting mail confused, <laughs> as we all know. But <laughs> I guess it was quite a problem, and they were re requested to change the name. So a contest was held, and uh, Alice Plummer was the one who named the, named the city, gave it its city, Costa Mesa. Oh. And for that, she received a $25 price. Oh, well. <laughs> Good money then. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the uh, the uh, Costa Mesa Women's Club needed a clubhouse and for many years they were in a building that is on Newport Boulevard near West 18th Street and it served served its purpose and they moved on in 1948 and built their present uh, location at the corner of uh, Anaheim Boulevard and West 18th Street, and they've been there since 1948. The uh, abandoned uh, clubhouse is now out, uh, op open, and it's uh, occupied by the mainly second store. Oh, for goodness sakes. So if anyone hmm. like to go there, I'll look around and get a <laughs> bit of history when you go hmm. looking for this, that odd thing. Hmm. And in uh, the, uh, the membership uh, of the Women's Club has changed uh, uh, a lot. Uh, many women waited until they had retired from their jobs before they join the women's club because our our social uh, structure has changed uh, a lot in recent years. So we have a number of women who are over 60, over 65 who join our mm -hmm. join our club as a way of enjoying their later years, their retirement years, and we have a. Uh, a very lively membership of about 140 people right now. 
and uh, we have uh, we do a lot of social service work like they have throughout the years. Um, years ago, they used to uh, do a lot of knitting for hospitals and uh, made layouts for the marine uh, babies and uh, uh, different organizations that needed things. And they've just sort of changed with the times. Today, we help the uh, by giving scholarships to uh, uh, students. We have uh, one scholarship uh, that's presented uh, in history at uh, Orange Coast College, and we have another one at Golden West College, that, uh, scholarship to a nursing student. That's wonderful. And uh, we have, uh, every, every, at Christmas time, we have a, a toy drive, and the toys are given to various organizations that uh, have a need for them. We have a food drive each month in which food is given to, taken to the uh, fish organization and uh, to be distributed to families in need. And we have uh, a number of other organizations that we support uh, uh, monetarily every oh, year. That's wonderful. Plus that, we also have a, a meeting, have a get-together and a luncheon, and uh, we have entertainers that come in to uh, uh, entertain us, and uh, we have a good time, a lot of camaraderie, and, and it's, it's a really a, an enjoyable place for uh, older women. And it's been thriving since the 20s. Since, uh, well, yes, since the 1920s. It, and like I said, it uh, originated in around 1910 as a sewing circle. That's wonderful. So That's I think it's, uh, it's just sort of changed a little bit with the times. Well, your involvement in the community is deep. And lately, you've been very involved with the Costa Mesa Historical Society. When did you uh, get involved with that organization? I think I've always been involved <laughs> in it, been involved in this one. <laughs> well, I made a mistake one time of going into Pink's drugstore mm -hmm. and talking with Lucy Pinkley. She seemed to be kind of the linchpin of a lot of a lot of people <laughs> getting in, of getting a lot of people involved in different different activities. Wonderful. <laughs> and um, she had a copy of a book called Slice of Orange, and she was looking at it. And uh, I have always been interested in reading. I think that I my mother used to say I had a she. Th began to wonder if I didn't have a book at the end of my nose <laughs> because I always had my nose in a book. Mm. And uh, uh, I asked her what she was reading and she says, oh, I just, looking up something here in this book, book about Costa Mesa. And I said, oh, really? So I talked with her about, about the book and she showed it to me and so on. And I said, well, gee, where can you get one of those? And she said, oh, I'll sell you one. She hmm. says, uh, I have some here. They're put out by the Costa Mesa Historical Society. And I thought, Historical Society? Well, I hadn't heard of that. Hmm. But I said, well, sure, why not? So she invited me to go to a, me a meeting. And she says, we're going to have a meeting next, next week. She says, uh, why don't you come on? Come on and join us, and you can sit with us. So I thanked her, and I thought about it, and I thought, oh, do I really want to go? But I did, and I've been going ever since. I'm really interested in, uh, in more than one thing in this town. I need to know something about the history of it. When I first came to town and wanted to look up something about history, we had such a small library, and they had almost nothing. and. Uh, I asked someone when this, and it wasn't at the library, but I had asked someone when this, this uh, town had begun, and nobody seemed to know. And so that's what prompted me to go to the library. Hmm. And uh, so I've been 
researching and learning things about this town and other towns ever since. Wonderful. And uh, so, uh, getting back to the to the historical society, I began coming to meetings and joined. And uh, then, when I retired, I had a lot of extra time. I thought, <laughs> and I began coming over here to do a little bit, and I'd come in for a couple of hours, and pretty soon it was three hours, and then I'd come in every time they were open. And I, there was always some little thing I could do, and uh, if nothing else, I could read. So this is what I've been doing ever since, and, and now I've become quite involved in it, and I've been um, secretary, recording secretary since uh, ever since uh, uh, since 1985, I believe, or 86. Oh hmm. And uh, then I'm also corresponding secretary and I handled a lot of things for the for the uh, Santa Ana Army Air Base group. We just had our 28th reunion uh, last Saturday. And uh, uh, I was into reservations and and uh, helping to see that it ran ran smoothly. And uh, I just uh, I just enjoy this place because there are so many things to learn all the time, and there's always something going on. Thank you. Our little. Uh, a little library that I had spoken of before uh, was just a small, small place on. Uh, was that Center Street or was it on Plummer? I can't remember what street. I think it was on Plummer Street, and uh, then they moved to uh, a larger place on. Uh, well, actually, where the fire station is right now, and now they are in their present location. And uh, I know that they're bulging at the seams. There's like the Costa Mesa Historical Society. <laughs> we have acquired so many items and so on, and we're just bulging at the seams here. <laughs> Trying to find a place to store it all. Yes, Grandma's well, not, not only that, but uh, we, we have visions of having a larger place at some time in the f near future. And... Uh, being able to uh, be a little more involved in community affairs, uh, to be able to present uh, more programs and uh, some hands-on type thing, which has been our goal and uh, uh, for some time. Wonderful. Well, Gladys, you have had a rich and full life in Costa Mesa. It's been wonderful to to visit with you and talk to you about it. One thing I was curious about, though, what kind of cars did you drive back then, since cars are so much a part of our society? When you first came to town, what were you driving? Well, when I first came to town, I wasn't driving. I had, I had lived in Chicago for many years. We had uh, the streetcar was two blocks away. The Elevated was two blocks another direction, and the bus was outside the door, practically. Or we called a cab. And uh, so I learned to travel on the Laguna stage lines, which ran from Costa Mesa to Balboa. And they also had another line that ran from Costa Mesa down to um, along Pacific Coast Highway and on down to Laguna and back. And we used that as transportation. Of course, we had to walk two and a half blocks to get to the bus. And, uh, but that was good exercise. And uh, we rode the bus. And then uh, when I went to work uh, as a waitress, uh, we would depending upon the hour, and if it was in the evening or at night, I always called a cab. And we used to kid Mr. Seals, the elderly Mr. Seals, who has since passed away, 
that uh, we had help pay for a couple of his cabs because <laughs> we use it so frequently. <laughs> then the uh, majority of, there were a lot of people in Costa Mesa at that time who did not have, did not have cars. Uh, they did a lot of walking. Some people who had, hadn't had cars since during the war years, they, the cars wore out and mm. so it wasn't until later that they uh, uh, got uh, were able to afford a car, and uh, then as more people came into the area, I, they brought in the cars, and uh, some of the uh, some of the bus lines improved, and some of them disappeared. Uh, we still have a bus line that covers uh, some of the main sections of town. I don't ride it very often, but on occasion I have recently, and uh, it runs between Santa Ana as the main headquarters for that, and it covers most of the county nowadays, so you can get around quite quite nicely by bus if you have to. That's right. But most people have each person in the family has a car anymore. It seems. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> From the traffic that's all mm. involved on the street. And of course, there's been so much more traffic since, uh, not only since the uh, uh, the area has uh, grown up uh, so much and is, so, uh, is uh, built, built up so much, uh, and high-rise uh, offices and so on has taken a toll on, on the roadways. And it seems though everyone needs a a car to get around and anymore. The uh, heavy trucks are kind of a menace sometimes, but uh, transportation has gone from from trains to uh, to trucks, and that's. Uh, Put a lot of extra, extra vehicles on the road. Oh yes. That. Well, it's been interesting to watch all these changes take place. I'm sure. Yes, it has, and uh, just like I say, this was a wide place in the road, so to speak, when it first came here, and now it's uh, it's pretty well filled up. All the my daughter said the other day, she said, "Gee, there used to be a, there used to be a nice open field there." Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the good old days. <laughs> uh, sure did. Well, Gladys, is there anything else that you'd like to add to this interview before we conclude? Well, I, I can't think of anything in, in particular. I, I know I rambled on and probably about talked myself out here. <laughs> I, uh, I enjoy living here. I think it's a wonderful spot. And you've helped make it that way. <laughs> you have. Your involvement in well, the community has been rich and, and important. Well, I hope to, hope to continue that. Good. And, uh, and that will conclude our interview on Tuesday, April 29th, 2003.